and welcome back to the U Sports Report New Mexico. Here to give you everything you need for sports. Let's break this down. On Sunday, we've got the final four matchups for the women's tournament coming up. We these, do. These will be some good games, Kimberly. I agree. I love women's basketball because I've heard people say it's really robotic. I don't see it, but I think it's really adrenaline. A lot of a lot of energy on those courts. A lot of energy, very fundamentally sound. This is the correct way to play basketball, everybody. First matchup we have the Yukon Huskies versus the Oregon State Beavers. Yes, you may have heard about Yukon. It seems that they haven't lost a game in the past, I'd say, I don't know, 30 years, it seems like. This, these ladies are an unstoppable force, led by a potential player of the year candidate, Brianna Stewart, putting up 19 points, almost nine rebounds a game, and Mariah Jefferson leading the team with nearly six assists a game. Gina Oriema has those ladies ready to play. They're going to be going up against Oregon State, led by Jamie Weisner, 17 points a game, Ruth Hamblin with 19 rebounds, and Sydney Weiss, 4.9 assists. Now, while this should be a close game, if everything goes to form, the Huskies win by 30. I agree. I think the Huskies, the last time that they ever lost in the game this big, they kind of took themselves aside and said, this isn't ever going to happen again. We're going to win until the day that this team goes out of business. This school falls to the ground. And I think UConn has determined their path to success every single year. Every year, they just keep reloading and reloading from players like Deanna Taurasi and Meyer Moore. They just continue to have excellent games. They do. Excellent squads. All right, the next game coming up, the Syracuse Huskies versus, sorry, the Syracuse Orange versus the Washington Huskies. Syracuse, the, yes, the ladies made it to the Final Four as a number seven seed. The men made it to the Final Four as a number 10 seed. Possibly this is the year for the Orange to pull off both. What do you think? I think yes. I mean, we talked about that with this with our college expert, Tyler. I see Syracuse doing big things, and I would love to see both teams take it all the way. They're going to really try to do that. Alexis Peterson leads the team in points and assists, 14.5 points a game, five, at five assists a game, and Brianna Day is coming up with nearly eight rebounds at 7.8 per game. Now, Washington has one of the most prolific scorers in the country, Kelsey Plum, 26.5 points a game, and she leads the team with nearly four assists a game. That's is, pro level stats. That is pro level stats. She definitely has a spot ready for her in the WNBA. But look, the Huskies are really going to have to ask her to score and do a lot to win this. These games are coming up on Sunday. Be sure to watch because it's exciting basketball all the way around with the championship game coming up Tuesday. Now, moving along, we've got. Spring training is nearing its end. Yes. That means baseball is on its way. Are you excited, Kimberly? I am. Unlike your rant last week, or this week, I guess, uh, <laughs> I'm a baseball fan. I don't like it on TV. I much prefer it live. But I'm excited. I think it's going to be a good season. It's going to be definitely a good season. While all the good big, the big money is going on the Chicago Cubs to possibly win it all, we want to talk about a few teams that didn't make the playoffs last year or were cellar dwellers who possibly may come up into this season and pull off an amazing win. Okay? Coming up, first team we have, the Boston Red Sox. Yes, Ugh. the Boston Red Sox were famous for a few years ago. They went from worst to first, won the World Series, and went back to worst again. But they changed a few things up. They added David Price as a pitcher to come along with that strong rotation, and they have K Craig Kimbrell, a reliever. So possibly if they can get Big Poppy and some of that young offensive core to get online, the Boston Red Sox could do some damage in the AL East. As much as I hate the Red Sox, Yankees fan always will be. <laughs> if they have names like Craig Kimball as their as their reliever, excuse me, I think that the Red Sox have got a pretty decent shot. The Red Sox do have a decent shot, but they're going to have to worry about the Tampa Bay Rays, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Oof. Matt Moore should be fully recovered from Tommy John surgery, and they've got Chris Archer as well. These guys are going to once again solidify a very solid bullpen because the name of the game in baseball is pitching. If you have a solid bullpen, you can win games. Solid bullpen and great defense, you can win that two to nothing game. You don't need to hit a ton of homers. Tampa Tampa Bay seems to be setting themselves up for that type of season. Sure, yeah. 
It's coming up. Now, we got the Seattle, Seattle Mariners. They have a new coach, a new manager in Scott Surveyas, and they've got Tawan Walker and James Paxton, two players that they traded for last season, young pitchers who really didn't step up. This season, we'll see if they can really come into form, be worth all the trades that they did in getting rid of Troy Tulowitzki, and seeing if these guys can come through and to make this team a lot stronger. They've got Rodriguez as a pitcher. Once again, coming back to pitching, if you have a strong bullpen, they can pull it off. Now, the Arizona Diamond backs they picked up Zach Greinke and you remember what Zach Greinke did last year absolutely on fire he really really carried the Los Angeles Dodgers as far as he could too bad he got let down by Clayton Kershaw again in the playoffs which seems to be his Achilles heel but they got Zach Greinke and Shelby Miller as a pitcher possibly Arizona who did hit very well last season. They just didn't have the pitching and the defense to stop other teams from scoring. Arizona could be a surprise wild card team. The Detroit Tigers. Yes, the Detroit Tigers. <laughs> a few years ago, they were Prieto winners. They were constantly playing in the division championships, but now they took a step back. Justin Verlander and Zimmerman should be healthy as pitching to come through. And Miguel Cabrera, the former Triple Crown winner, he is nearing the end of his career, but he's still got a lot left in that bat. Let's see if he can pull them off. And last but not least, we're going to talk about the Miami Marlins. Yes, the Miami Marlins with a young, young team. John Carlos Stanton, the home run king. D. Gordon, hey, Isotopes fans, you may remember him from <laughs> playing around. Christian Yelch and Jose Fernandez. And these are all excellent young hitters who are going to be coached by Barry Bonds. Hey, love him or hate him, however you feel about the steroids or human growth hormone issues with Barry Bonds, he's going down in history as one of the best pure hitters in the history of the game. He's going to be out there giving all of these young guys his tips. He's promoting a team atmosphere. Rather than look for individual at-bats, look for team at-bats. That's what Kansas City did last year, and they hoisted the trophy. So possibly the Miami Marlins, with a strong pitching can come through with these young hitters and pull something off. You said, it, you said it yourself, it doesn't necessarily take a lot of talent to win a baseball game. It takes a lot of security in your position, some good coaching, and like you said before, a strong defense, but even stronger bullpen. If you don't have the bullpen, you don't have much at all. You don't have much at all. And we'll see if these teams who didn't have much last year can add a little something and give us a surprise for this upcoming Major League Baseball season. All right, we got one more NBA highlight for you. We've got the Charlotte Hornets at the Philadelphia 76ers. Yes, you know the 76ers, a team that's only won a combined 20 games in the past five years. Yes, those 76ers. So take a <laughs> guess on who won. We'll wait. We'll wait for your answer. Give it to us, fans. Okay, as know. you can see, Charlotte <laughs> beating them down as Philly always gets beat down. 100 to 85. That's just how it goes for Charlotte, ladies and gentlemen. The Philadelphia 76ers were not able to pull this one out. Okay, coming up next, we've got a little bit of the Players Club. We're going to talk about the players who really stood out to us over the past couple days here on the U Sports Report. <laughs>